Hi friends, thanks for joining us here at Not Toxic Home. We're always so glad when you join us. We are continuing in our study on Pharmacaea Revealed and we are still on Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 has like 60 some verses or something like that, so it's really huge, but it's very telling about the times that we're living in. So we're studying this in context because there's so much information um, confirming the times that we're living in and uh, we want to share that with you. And as, um as I stated before and in most videos, um, she is teaching both of us um, together. I have not read this, so I will be uh, reacting live to it. Um, this is just one of those, it's easier to, to, to do it that way. There are studies that um, I am working on also that um, will be um, will be videoed later. So so we uh, ended the last video in Deuteronomy 28. We encourage you to check out the previous episodes. I guess you'd call them. <laughs> um, so we are now in Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And uh, I've already discussed that this is pretty clearly to me dualistic in regards to, uh, you know, this is definitely talking about the times we're living in, in my opinion. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. I mean, even yesterday we were talking about the, uh, um, it talked about cows being murdered and things like that, and um, that's, as we discussed, the uh, bill that just came out, um, there is a call to uh, get rid of, uh, what gas is that? Um, whatever gas is in a cow's fart. Um, oh, methane. <laughs> <laughs> Methane, yeah. And the, there's only one way to get rid of a cow's fart, so you gotta get rid cow. of the cow. Get rid of the cow. So yep. um, there, there you have it. Um, verse thirty, Deuteronomy twenty-eight, verse thirty-seven says, "And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee." Now, this is one verse that I did not do a deep word study on. I didn't consider it necessary and I still don't consider it necessary because I read this and I think of Revelation and I think of, what is it, Jeremiah? Is it Jeremiah? Where it talks about Mystery Babylon as well. I see here, I see Babylon right here. That's what I see. My question to, to that is then, what is an astonishment? Is it, is it actually an astonishment? I, I'm good at this. I'm good at pointing out. <laughs> well, it's you want to know, so maybe someone else wants to know. I didn't want to know. I still don't want to know, but I'm looking it up anyways. Uh, let's see. It, that's 8047 in Hebrew. Sama, uh, feminine, it means ruin, astonishment, ruin. The primary meaning is ruin, wasting, basically evil people who, who deserve to be destroyed because of their sins and wickedness. So. so it doesn't actually mean astonishment, well, it means ruin. But a, a second meaning of astonishment, dismay, and horror. Hmm. Uh, but it's used to describe feelings towards Israel and its cities in their times of disobedience. So this is the judgment for disobedience. That's, I mean, they're very clo closely, those two meanings are very closely tied because, uh, you know, the world's being destroyed by God because people are disobedient. And... People are astonished at, oh no, why would this happen? Why yeah. is God destroying such a wonderful, good world? Yeah. You know, this is non toxic home. This is a very toxic, wicked, evil world. This is not a good yeah. world. <laughs> and as I've mentioned yesterday, and I'll mention today as well, it is not uncommon at all for people to think that this world will become a better place. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just. As I'm sure you know, be prepared for that because it. Everyone I come into contact with seems to think it will. So, um, yeah. ex expecting it not to is a better approach. Right, and uh, with this verse, in my opinion, referring to Babylon, uh, I you know the United States is a substantial representation of Babylon today because it is the hammer of the whole world and uh, has spread its wickedness all across mm -hmm. the world. And thus, I believe the United States will be judged very, very, very harshly. And 
I think that is beginning now. Uh, and I see the United States, perhaps a fake civil war coming, um, you know, sooner than the, before, prior to the second seal. Um, and, you know, that'll be astonishing because, oh, the United States, you know, that's the world leader. And they're already talking about in the media about how uh, China and Russia are geared to, and even Japan, I've even heard Japan being mentioned as the possible nation states that could supersede the United States in power, whether it be military, uh, commercial, or financial. So, What's funny is... I've heard that China's broke, so um, I don't. Could they, be, they, um, there's no way they could be a supersede. The, well, the U.S. is broke too, but we would like to. We like to print money, so um, it's, it'd be an interesting two broke nations fighting it out for mm -hmm. supremacy, I guess. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I hadn't uh, hadn't heard that. But you can't. You literally can't trust anything that is out there so nope we don't know and quite frankly we don't really care we just know that everything's going to be destroyed and yeah. so we are at the beginning of that and so that's that's to be expected the destruction of the dollar is necessary really for prophecy to be fulfilled so that's going to happen at some point yep. all right so 38 37 so 38 Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little, and for the locusts shall consume it. And mm. this is already a problem. This is already an issue. Basically, this is saying you're going to plant a bushel of seed, and you're going to get a bushel of seed back. That, there, there are similar verses elsewhere, uh, in, you know, in Judah. In Jeremiah, maybe Amos, I don't remember for sure, but in Isaiah, uh, about this sort of thing occurring where you're going to plant and you're not going to get any yield. And this is already a problem. You know, you mentioned previously about 30 some percent um, of crops in the western United States, they're already telling them under because of the drought uh, that's so bad. So. And here's the thing, too. Um, they. Uh, they are always trying in, 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 the, in the West, they are always trying to uh, take their irrigation systems and think of new, new, new ways to, to, to irrigate things because getting rain out there has always been a problem. And I, from what I understand, it wouldn't be the, the corn belt or any other belt for the grains that the U.S. produces without the irrigation, so um, it's just just a side note. Yeah, uh, let's see. But additionally, in this verse, it also says the locust mm -hmm. shall consume it. And uh, we've seen, I've seen really weird insects here that I've never seen before in my life, just since 2020. For example, spittle bugs. Spittle bugs are the weirdest things. Uh, they. Uh, it's oftentimes on tr like small young trees that they attack, but they can also attract or attack weeds and other plants as well. But it literally looks like somebody like took a bunch of spit and put it on a stick, and it, it's it, it it looks like bubbly spit on a stick. And apparently the spittle bugs produce that, and it kills the plants. Uh, but there's all, this th this word doesn't actually mean spittle bugs, but that's just an example of what I've seen. Uh, locust, this word means locust, it also means grasshoppers. Uh, in the past couple years, I've seen um, mainstream media articles and headlines saying, quote, plagues of locusts of biblical proportions. I find it, that very telling. Yeah, well, and I, like I said earlier, I have been, she gives me verses and I have been looking them up, and in Revelation 9, it talks about locusts giving, being given power to uh, to hurt hurt man. But this is in Revelation nine, which is uh, see. There's beginning of sorrows, so anger. This the, the, that probably the part of God's fury. 
Yeah. But so. those locusts are... Aren't those the locusts that have the head of a man? Tail of a squirrel? That's something different, I think. No. Okay. No. Yeah. There's yeah. A, there, there are a few different... There are two or three different uh, things that are mentioned that are turned loose and given power to hurt man. Who, By the way, uh, it, it is prophesied that humans will continue, no matter how bad the world gets, that humans will continue to get, to uh, try to get back to normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what, we, what we're just discussing with the locusts and other things is another way that God tries to um, get you to come to Him. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, a, it's a sad, the end of the chapter, it's a sad ending for those people who, uh, who still aren't getting it who still can't give up their, their riches and their gold and their silver and all of that. So yeah. it's it's part of that. Um, people will always be trying to get back to normal. It doesn't matter if every and the second seal is cracked open and everything's on fire. So um, people are always going to try to rebuild. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's telling. And I'm sure people are going to still even more so, why aren't things better? Right. We have, we're so smart as humans and we have such amazing technology and we're smarter than God. This can't possibly be the judgment of God because he promised me a rapture because I believed one time, one day for a moment. Yeah. Before I went out and got drunk that night. Exactly. Precisely. I put on a big old spectacle. Yeah. 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 So anyway. But confusion is part of the end times game and people are so confused internally down from the depths of their heart. They are utterly confused. Confused. They can't make up their minds. They don't know what they want. They can't make decisions. It is phenomenal. Yeah. So we, what we do is, I mean, we have lots of decisions to make a lot of times. I mean, and usually we got to make them, bam, right then. And so we put on the mind of Christ, exercise our sound mind, uh, stay calm. You know, that will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So we trust in God. And we take the information that we have available at that particular moment in time. We discuss it. We make a decision. And sometimes maybe it's not the right decision. Maybe we should have made a different decision. But we don't hem and haw about whether we made the right decision or not. Mm-hmm. Because the decision was already made. We did it. It's done. Got to move on with our lives. So. And the time frame we're talking about here is usually anywhere from five minutes to two hours tops. And whatever whatever decision we make, we stick with it, we go with it, and that's it. And, um, I mean, we're talking about life and death here sometimes. So, um, it's... But, we are called to handle every dis- every everything with love. And we can't, as a, it is, it's hard for me to get used to. But we can't decide things for people. Right. And that, that aspect of business is a tough one for me to get used to because I, I like, like we said, we as a family and as a business, we, we dive into things, we make a decision, and we go with it. We don't, it doesn't take us months to, to figure anything out. So. Yeah. But that's because we are, we have peace internally Mm -hmm. and we have sound mind. We put on the mind of Christ, put on the helmet of the hope of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and all of the other things that I can't remember uh, for the armor of God. (laughs) So, yep. So, all right. Um, Verse 39. er, Yes. Yes. Astonishment. Seed. Yeah, 39. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but thou shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Worms here also means parasites. And uh, I've seen more... Oh, daughter. The weed daughter is a parasitic weed, and I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, it's also called strangleweed, mm. and I I'd never seen it before, and I saw it um, since the past couple months. 
and it was it wasn't there one day and the next day it was all over in an area and I went out and I put it all in a trash bag and who and I told I told you I said I if I if I were to name this I would call it strangle weed because it is a weed that is strangling the other plants around it and it didn't have roots in the ground which is super weird uh, and so I got online later and I looked up the word strangle weed because that's what made sense to me and that is actually what daughter is called sometimes and it's a parasitic weed it lives off of other weeds it's so weird uh, but if people and plants and animals are malnourished then they're more susceptible to parasites bacterial overgrowth yeast overgrowth etc so this is logical Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive oil, for thine olive shall cast its fruit. So olive trees, I researched this actually for a different study, and I don't even remember which one it was, but um, olive trees actually have been plagued in Egypt, not in Egypt, in Europe in recent years to the extent that Italy, which is known for olive trees and their olive production, actually has put out public statements saying, if you're coming here for olive trees, please don't be disappointed because they're dying. And so many have died. I don't remember what the statistics were that I saw. Uh, and I don't remember the exact disease that they were declaring was the cause. Uh, and of course, diseases have causes. Uh, but it this is this is happening right now uh there it's not all the olive trees aren't gone yet obviously but a lot are hmm. thou shalt beget sons and daughters but thou shalt not enjoy them for they shall go into captivity oh. this reminded me of school public school public education rockefeller cation as we refer to it um march 2020 those kids were put in prison. Mm -hmm. Okay, they some of them, they literally had, it was like a cage around their desk, literally. And then they had to suffocate themselves and they had to stay six feet away. They were in prison. That is prison. Mm -hmm. That is the definition of captivity. That is the definition of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. And of course they couldn't leave. If they left, then they'd get in big time trouble. And they are, they're still being tested. Kids? Yep. Um, oh. Well, you, you didn't, you didn't read the, the, the email, but um, I get, we have a nephew, is that what? Mm -hmm. we, we have a nephew, apparently, that is still in school and was tested positive and had to miss, had to miss time, but they are apparent that tells me that they're still testing. I don't know how, I don't know how often, but they're they're definitely still testing. So it's a, it's a sad, it's a sad sad situation. I remember when stuff seeing buses out. I haven't seen them yet, oddly enough. But um, the kids on those buses look so bummed. I I, I remember bus rides where the kids were happy. Yes. Way way back, growing up, growing up way back. I mean, I I never enjoyed the bus, but I didn't have that many friends. But kids were always happy. Now that now the looks and they're just they just look D look they look dead. They just dead. I, I honestly, I can't imagine as a parent still having your kid in the public school system. I I, I would think that going through going through what they have to get, what they have gone through for one year would be enough as a parent to uh, pull your kids and uh, figure something figure out. something else out I mean yeah. there's other options but um, I just I just can't I mean I, I I just can't imagine putting your kids through that I mean you're destroying your kids yeah well the, it, the education system was already completely wicked I used to uh, teach early childhood education preschool and pre-k and there were children that i had that uh, i could have said well they just won't get in line they're problematic i don't have the time to deal with them etc 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 when some of them 
uh, had behavior problems stemming from the parents, uh, so I had to do behavior modification. But, uh, it, well, I had to do behavior modification with all the kids in order to keep them in line, basically. Um, but, uh, so that they, it just wasn't chaos and they didn't hurt each other. But uh, the, there were a number of children that I could have said, well, you need to take them to a psychiatrist. Here's a psychiatrist I recommend because I believe they have ADHD. But in reality, they just needed a little bit more attention, a little bit more love. They needed recognition that, hey, this is a kid that's got energy. The kid has energy. The kid needs to run that energy off. And so the problem is that a lot of these kids that end up with these diagnoses, if the teacher would just uh, like focus a little, give the kid a little bit more attention and keep the kid busy, um, you know, especially in transitional times and keep the kid, um, you know, and encourage the kid to run the energy off instead of punishing the kid and keep making the kid not be able to go run around during recess. I mean, that's a huge problem. <sighs> there are other ways besides labeling with ADHD and giving them toxic pharmaceuticals, but I mean, all the kids today are drugged. They've all gotten the snake Literally. bite. They've all gotten the snake bite, or at least one of the snake bites, just about. Literally. And yeah, so they're all drugs, so they're all just barely conscious. It's just, it's it's terrible to see what's happened. Just yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I read that email and I just, I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So, stuff's, uh, she hasn't read it yet. She'll read it tomorrow. But, um, Verse, stuff's changed over there. Verse 42. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall... The locust consume. We have, again, locust. Yes. However, this is actually a different word for locust. It does include locust, but this word includes other insects that ravage trees and plants. So insects in general are going to ravage trees and plants. We've seen that. Mm. Um, when they spray the desiccants in the sky and have the microwaves, um, attacking the trees because this verse is this is for specifically about trees and fruit production uh, then the plants are dehydrated and if a plant is dehydrated just like a human they're more susceptible to other issues so what can uh, what can we do to keep the plants from becoming Basically, the metals that are in the sky are desiccants. Um, what can we do to combat that, or, or can we? So mulch is like God's filter. It's like God's water filter. And so mulch helps uh, to filter those chemicals out, to filter out some of those metals. Mm -hmm. Also, zeolite, putting zeolite um, around on the ground, that can help as well. But neither one are a complete and total answer. Uh, because you can only do so much. But zeolite absorbs um, heavy metals as well as uh, toxic chemicals too. And so if you are interested in that, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money. You can just go to a farm store and get what's called Sweet PDZ. And the bag on the back says Klypt Kliptonolite. I can't remember exactly how it's pronounced, but that is zeolite, same thing. Gotcha. Uh, verse 43, 43 and 44. The stranger that is within, the stranger that is within the shall get up above the very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail that's very weird right so when i read this and i could be wrong okay you can disagree that's fine we can disagree and still be friends that's totally fine but when i read this uh, what came to my mind was how the united nations has infiltrated all levels of government including at the local levels so they've all got there's a plant basically from them uh, even at the most at the lowest local level so that is the stranger that's within 
that I, I mean, I see that as a stranger within your country. And they're going to get up very high above thee. It's already here. Like the United, United Nations is already here. Their uh, climate change agenda, their UN 21, United, uh, all of that, or Agenda 21, sorry, um, and Agenda 2030, that's already, we're already seeing that happen at local levels, even at town levels, small town levels and county levels here in the United States. And so um, those people are, are already here. They've already been set in their posts, and I expect them to be ruling over us. Can I yeah. mention something? So, um, there's also not just not just the United Nations, but um, as many of you probably know, if you spend any time at all watching our channel, um, the government doesn't doesn't run the world. Um, there is there are people behind the scenes with lots and lots of money, part of which are the United Nations. Yes, that's that's certainly a, a decent part of it, but that's not the only part of it. There right. are many, many, many branches of that tree that are finding its way into our, our government and telling them how to, uh, how to how to run things. So that can also, you know, the, the president has someone has, has an advisor and the, pe the people are behind the scenes telling the advisor what to advise mm -hmm. and threatening them with various things if they don't comply you know there's the things that you hear in movies the things that you see in movies are actually um, they're truer than you might think so um, that can also be the other aspect of the stranger that is uh, within that is very mm -hmm. high and yeah. coming very low so there's yeah. there's all that as well yeah um, but then also money comes into play here oh, all the time money comes into play he'll lend to you and you won't lend to him because you won't have any money because all the jobs will have been destroyed by the fourth industrial revolution and uh, because they've destroyed the economy and they'll continue to destroy the economy people get so upset about the destruction of the economy and you know what the wicked people are doing yeah of course but this is, has to happen for prophecy to be fulfilled and so getting mad at these people isn't helpful is it does it does it benefit anyone to get mad about these things study pro instead of listening to news stories about what the latest thing that the that the wicked people are doing read your bible study prophecy so that you know what's coming you know what to expect uh, don't get emotional about these things. Emotion is controlling, and uh, the both the mainstream media and the alternative media control you via emotion. Yeah, I had a thought and it left. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're 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 you're, you're completely you're fine. It, it's uh, but yep. she's she's exactly right about the e emotion and the mm -hmm. money. Um, oh, I remember now. You, uh, if you know the truth, and if you're watching us, you obviously at least are, are trying to learn the truth at the very least. Um, you see things through a very different lens. Um, I mean, we watch TV, we, we enjoy, we have enjoy, we gain, gain enjoyment through watching TV and all these things, but we have a lens mm -hmm. through our studies, through our teachings. Um, there's a lens that you see things through, and as you deal with the world, as you watch movies, as you just go through life, you see things through that lens. And that is highly important as you try to... I mean, I just had a... a, a a client text me about how they appreciate me being so kind and that tells me that they don't get that a lot mm -hmm. and um, I don't know how uh, I don't know any other way to be I mean fighting they the world wants you to be divided and in conflict mm -hmm. and if you've ever had a fight with a significant other I mean we've had fights before does anything good come of it never never I mean, we don't fight nearly 
uh, rarely, occasionally, we one one or the other of us, rarely both, <laughs> lose our head, and um, it uh, it comes back relatively quickly. But um, there's no reason to fight. I mean, you get hit with a hard circumstance or at a bad time, that stinks. But can't help it so there's no no reason to no reason to get emotional and fight about it mm -hmm. you just deal with it mm -hmm. so right but yeah. these two verses here tell me okay so it's going to be strangers within that are going to take down basically most countries and thou shalt come down very low uh oppression you know there's a theme of the end times and that is oppression and of course there's multiple themes Oppre deception Number one, that was the first thing that Christ told us: "Don't be deceived, you dum dums." Um, and so, well, then oppression, 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 persecution. Expect persecution. Do you want to live in a world in which you have no rights, no freedom, and you are just constantly hammered about everything? If you don't want to live in that kind of world, which is coming then you need to be on the right side of eternity. You need to uh, repent and believe daily. You need to be studying your Bible like there's no tomorrow. And then you need to be internalizing that so that you uh, produce the fruit that is required and expected of us. And what's interesting about that and something I'm still experiencing is that um, as you study, as you learn more, as you dive into um, some, some stuff that and study in Revelation 9 and it brings up some stuff um, your heart changes as to what interests you and you'll find that less and less about the world and what it has to offer will interest you as you as you study and dive into to to the Bible so uh, but I always every once in a while I need to mention this it, you got to study the right version um, if you're studying one of Satan's favorite translations it's not going to come alive and you're not going to get the same information as you would if you're in a not the new King James because apparently there's a Satan has infiltrated the King James version also recently but um, get a 1611 or something like or something authorized or authorized something similar and that's the versions that will come alive to you hopefully yeah okay. uh, so verse 45 moreover all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest <laughs> not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Now, of, co of course, the statutes are no longer relevant because they were fulfilled by Mosaic, or f Mosaic law was fulfilled by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But all these curses, all, and if you uh, have a deep understanding of the book of Revelation, then you're going to be like, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's very... Uh, they correlate a lot. Um, so all of these curses are going to come upon and pursue and overtake until thou be destroyed. So until the wicked are destroyed, really, we're going to see all these things. So pharmacaea is not going to go away. It doesn't matter how many people expose it. Um, it's not going to go away. It's not going to stop. There, Who knows how many COVID variations are to come. Who knows how many other new diseases they'll invent as a result of their poisoning of people via various methods. It, it's not going to stop. Nope. Um, it's, it's right here. Right here. Till thou be destroyed. And But why is it happening? Because people are disobedient. They, don't, they do not obey God. <laughs> Had a, I know I bring it up a lot, but um, it, it is very, very true. If you are, it's it's very difficult to find the non non toxic information 
out there mm-hmm. because the powers that be, i.e. the Googles and the people that run this world, are filtering that information so that you can it, so that it is harder and harder, if not impossible, to find anything but worldly advice on how to get better. Yes. And mm-hmm. if you, it's it's just very very difficult. Mm-hmm. So um, it may be impossible at some point to to find the the it probably will be mm-hmm. to find non toxic information and that there is exactly why pharmacia will continue. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've said before, they are spending billions of dollars in Indiana alone on. Uh, pharmacy and hospitals so that I mean they're expecting to make billions Mm -hmm. so um, it's not going anywhere right so if I look at what was available online via an online search including even via Google just three years ago versus what's available online now it doesn't even compare Uh, the websites the blogs of people who are who were healing themselves and treating themselves naturally, a lot of them are blacklisted. Uh, some have been completely scrubbed from the internet, period. 100% they are gone. I know that's coming to our website, so I don't back it. I don't back stuff up everywhere because I know that God is ultimately in control. So when God says, hey, there's not gonna be any more website for you guys, then I know that was that is because he has permitted it to happen. Um, and so I'm like I said I'm not I, I did consider you know buying another website from a different provider and backing up all the information there but who is ultimately in control that would be my lord and I trust him he knows what's best not me so I've got plenty of other things to do to help people um, besides spending time backing things up onto another website so um i didn't know she had thought about that i did i did think about it Um, i learned some things on these videos sometimes well i did think about it and i consulted holy ghost and i was led to verses that were like hey god's in control god's in control god's in like verses like this who's who's doing it who's destroying the world that is god so uh as long as his word his his word endureth forever it says the word of the lord endureth forever and that's what matters to me so the rest of this uh verse 45 has has more um the rest of it says um and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever that's verse 46 right so all of these curses will be upon the wicked and us because we're here too but they're forever forever until destruction obviously um as for a sign that these god is is thrown out all kinds of signs and wonders including in the sky because they're supposed to be looking up for our redemption draws near and most people have no idea they think well it's climate change or those lines up there don't mean anything in the sky that checkerboard sky oh totally natural you know and all these other sorts of ridiculous things because that is how we've been um how we've been conditioned now there are actually a lot of universities now that have designed and implemented programs for starting in kindergarten all through 12th grade to teach children about the import of geoengineering. And so that is going to explain to the children why there are checkerboard skies. Oh, well, because we as humans got to save the planet because the weather's messed up because of carbon. (sighs) And so this is how we're saving the environment. This is how we're saving our planet. Um, I I know the word planet is not a word that I should be using, but when you're indoctrinated from birth on, it's difficult to modify all of your language all the time. Yes, we, we do not live on a planet. We do not live in a solar system. We, the, all, all, that, that is a big, big, big fat lie. And um, we are not spinning. 
just sit down if you're not sitting ask your body are you moving ask your body are you moving there you go right there and read your bible it tell your it, bible. there's there's biblical cosmology that explains um what we just said and, and and if you don't believe the bible you can read rocket science because rocket science tells you to and flight plans and all that i mean they they all when you when they're when they're flying in a plane it's based on the earth being flat yeah uh, shaking my head productions has a lot of good pictures and videos um, exposing that sort of thing but if you go to Google and search for it you're just gonna get controlled opposition you're not gonna get actual people who actually really have a brain and she mentioned something about carbon earlier and carbon is less than a percent of what's going what what is in the environment and humans are responsible for three percent of that less mm -hmm. than less than a percent so all the billions of dollars that are being spent to save the world because of carbon, um, the environment has 99.9999% of other things in it. So it's all pointless, it's all a big fat lie. And even though that's the case, uh, it, a lot of money is being put into um, electrical uh, batteries all that because of carbon and um, I one thing that will happen because of that is uh, it'll be more expensive and harder to uh, main to run gasoline engines so. and with I mean so fourth if you look at the fourth seal you've got 25% of the population gone now is it just 25% in the fourth seal or plus people dying in the first, second, and third seal, or does the fourth seal include, does that 25% include prior to that? I don't know. Either way, one fourth of the population is gonna be dead in the fourth seal, and the wicked controllers of the earth, the elite today, um, you know, they believe that that's gonna be because they made it happen, not because this is God's judgment and he's laid it on people's hearts to do these sorts of things. Now, when we get to the sixth seal, it's gonna be very obvious uh, that, okay, well, this is God. This is definitely God um, judging the world. So, anyway, we got on a little, uh, little, slight, slight tangent there yep. a little bit, but um, nothing that is going on right now makes a lick of sense um, with uh, common sense. It all makes sense through the lens of this, though. Right, but we're supposed to trust the experts because mm -hmm. they're smarter than we are, even though they contradict each, each contradict themselves from week to week. And even though they don't actually have uh, places in Antarctica where they, not in Antarctica, but the Antarctica as well, but also um, in the northern area, for example, like northern Greenland, northern Iceland, northern Russia, etc., where they say that the ice is melting there and all these terrible things are happening and it's global warming right there and all these sorts of things. But if you actually pay attention to the headlines, they'll say scientists are going to this one place where they say that they have uh, studied all of the data and they have all this data, but they actually just made up the data. They didn't actually have it, a... a uh, weather station there but they're going there now and they're going to put a weather station there now but all the other data they just made it up before today but now they're going to have real data like, that is what the articles say <laughs> i'm not kidding i'm not exaggerating or joking and that's the data that's used to make decisions scientifically how is science ever made up data that's not science <laughs> that's pharmacaea. That's that's magic. That's witchcraft. That's sorcery. Um, so, so, verse forty-seven. Boy, did we get on a tangent, and uh, it's just. But it's all related. It's all, it's re all related. It's all related, and it's so. Um, it, it, the, the the amazing thing is that since twenty twenty, this world has been is. Uh, it's being judged and God knows we are stupid and the amazing thing is I mean he is a genius he knows we are stupid and we have shut the world down 
and completely changed the world for a quote-unquote pandemic that was killing 20 people at a time. And now we're attacking the environment because of, of uh, carbon, which is less than 1% of the entire environment. But we're going to spend billions of dollars on the complete minority and blame everything on that. It is amazing to me the big things that happen because of such small things. And that is mm -hmm. just, uh, it is unreal. And But the irony regarding carbon is that if we had more carbon in the environment, uh -huh. then plants would do better. Plants would thrive. Plants would grow larger. Uh, that's why when you look at a lot of things like Devil's Tower and a lot of the uh, towering redwoods out west where cars can literally drive through the middle and such, um, those are ancient. And so I believe as a result at that time that the oxygen levels and the carbon levels were very high in the atmosphere at that time, allowing the plants to grow larger and produce more um, and produce larger fruit and all these. And I understand people say Devil's Tower is just rock and all these sorts of things, whatever. Look at it. It's a tree stomp. <laughs> I've been there. I went there many years ago. It's a tree stomp. <laughs> uh, there, yes, there are these megalithic ruins everywhere, and all of the reasons that were given for them are just absurd. Every every explanation historically just about that we're given for almost everything is just ridiculous. But um, verse forty-seven. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. So this is why all of these things, all of these judgments are happening. Because people didn't serve God. If they did pretend to serve him, they didn't do it with a joyful heart, with gladness of heart. Uh, they didn't thank him for the abundance of all things. To whom much is given, much is required, the scriptures tell us. You are biblically rich if you have all of the basic necessities. If you have food, water, clothing, and shelter, mm -hmm. you are considered rich in the Bible. I encourage you to check this out and confirm it. Don't believe anything we say. Don't just blindly believe it. Do, do your due diligence and look into this in the Bible yourself. Um, I was very surprised when I found this. Because that means that we're absolutely rich. Uh, mm -hmm. But when you compare us to however many people are living on a dollar a day, mm -hmm. we live in the U.S., so that's my standard of measurement for finances. Well, yeah, we're way, we live on way more than a dollar a day. <laughs> uh, I don't know how we would live on a dollar a day. That is... Yeah, we are absolutely rich. Absolutely. Um, to many people, if they go to church or, or read scripture, that's a burden. They think, oh, good job, me. I read my Bible for five minutes today. Um, and Or I went to church this Sunday, and I sat in a pew, and I took that hour of the week for my God. Um, that is not serving the, the Lord with joyfulness. If you are studying scripture and it seems like a burden to you, something is wrong. It should be joyful. It should be, you should be reading it and going, Whoa, God, that is amazing that you would choose to choose humble, stupid, little old me to reveal this sort of insight to. Because the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth, we're told. And what you are doing for the Lord should be a source of unspeakable joy. Not a burden. Serving him should be your absolute delight. Can you finish the thought? Verse the 48. Yeah. Feels like I left it incomplete. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And shall he put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he hath destroyed thee. Right. So again, this is dualistic. If you uh, read the Old Testament prophets, such as Isaiah, that prophesied. Was it Isaiah? Was it Jeremiah? Maybe it's both. I don't remember. Um, it's one of those moments where I can't think of it, but can't remember for sure. But the 
Old Testament prophets that prophesied about the Babylonian um, captivity, and then they repeatedly would say about a yoke of iron around the neck. So this can be literal, absolutely, and that was literal for them. But this can also be figurative, metaphorical. Uh, this is, let's see, a yoke of iron upon thy neck. This is oppression. This is enslavement. Um, the New World Order system is absolute enslavement. It is taking the Babylonian system that we're currently under, which is enslaving, and putting it on steroids uh, so that we have no rights. We have to do everything the right way. Social credit system, uh, which is rolling out in multiple countries. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, China was the leader there. Yeah, they've had it for almost a decade, I think. I don't know how long they've had and, it. But the U, you're, you're going to find that the U.S. is going to be behind in everything. Mm -hmm. That's just the way the, the the greatest country in the world is the, the last one to do anything, supposedly. Sometimes, yeah. So, so but these are the enemies the Lord's going to send against thee. And so God uses evil people to fulfill his purposes and mm -hmm. his judgment. He's going to hunger It'll be famine for food, a literal famine for food. And when uh, there's famine in the Bible, typically that is associated with lack of water as well. Thirst, We, I think it was the last video we discussed water and how they mm. are controlling and drying up our water supply. Um, so you're going to be thirsty, lack of clothing. So in nakedness, lack of clothing. And in want of all things. So heat, shelter, medicine. Plant medicine, I would include, uh, along with that, the basic essentials, the basic essentials. The the statement, you know, you you'll own nothing and be happy. That is prophecy. That is prophecy. Everyone's going to be impoverished except the uh, very tip top people in the world, uh, and that's coming. But that there also are times where, uh, such as in the sixth seal, where just things are destroyed and everybody's on the same level, really, because it because it says every strong man and bond man and uh, every free man and the rich people and the poor people and the people working class and everybody's going to be on the same page basically um, in the sixth seal where you have this worldwide earthquake which includes a skyquake. Uh, so God's going to shake the world, shake the earth and the sky as well. So this, you know, you've got people telling you um, you need to go stock up on toilet paper, um, which, by the way, we've got an article about uh, toilet paper alternatives on the website. But you need to stock up on that. And if you haven't stocked up on food, then you're an idiot. Um, and you're just going to die of famine and that's going to be all your fault and then you've got people saying well you need to get your money out of the bank and go invest in gold and silver um, or you're an idiot because all of the financial people are saying you know the dollar is dying and all of these sorts of things and i have asked holy ghost multiple times like hey is this, is this what you want so should we do that and every time I'm led to verses like, uh, I think it's in, I don't remember where it's at in the Old Testament prophets where it says, they'll cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. And then there's another verse um, in scripture where God says, the gold and silver is mine. So those are the verses that I'm led to when I ask, I mean, you might be led to something else. You might be led to do something else. But this is not something that you can physically prepare for. This is only something that you can spiritually prepare for. And I mean, we're supposed so I mean, we're supposed to uh, be switched to a digital digital dollar at, at some point. And um, I mean, there are things that I there are places that I pay cash because that is how they want paid. Um, so. You know, I, who who knows how that'll be rolled out? Will there be an opportunity to 
go put all your money in the bank to be changed to a digital dollar or how's that how I mean I think about it's just because the day to day my day to day operations um, those 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 kinds of things come up but um, yeah I've um, that that that's that's the only thing I've ever been um, just day to day you know going to the dump or um, going to buy honey or figuring out how to get my phone so that it uh, can pay the honey place digitally and just things like that that's 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 the only thing that I I think about. Yeah. yeah, well, God tells us he, he's in control. He says, trust me. So when when you ask the Lord for guidance, you are not going to be instructed to do the same things that we're instructed to do. But we know that he is in control and we trust that. So if you ask and Holy Ghost gives you instruction, then trust that. Trust him. Trust not in uncertain riches, it says in Scripture. Um, because that's just gonna that's gonna go away. It's gonna fly away. It's gonna flee away. It's gonna rust away. Um, store up your treasures in heaven. So, yeah. uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. I didn't. I'm not. Well, but it's the time. Yeah. I like to keep it under an hour. Yeah. yeah. What? Love you. I love Sorry. you too. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Have a most beautiful and blessed day. We were on the same page there. Non toxic out. <laughs>